One of the things I teach you all is how to take what manufacturers say with a grain of salt. Today I will focus on Apple and the iPhone. This past Christmas I mentioned how I saw my family all come to my house and all of them simultaneously pull out their iPhone 13 Pros and I was just shaking my head because they just fall for it like many of you. I'm going to talk about the lies, the fake messaging of the company that says privacy is iPhone and you will discover that iPhone is the opposite. It is the most sophisticated surveillance device ever invented. Let's just understand something. There are many secret things that happen that you didn't bargain for or agree to when you use Find My Phone or when they released Apple AirTag. Because folks, if you have an iPhone, not only do they do client-side scanning or remote scanning of your phone content, which I talked about in my last video, but they have built the most intense geolocation infrastructure beating Google in their ability to spot where everyone is at any time. And you will all think it's cool. Stay right there. I'm on the platform odyssey.com. I'm now one of the top creators on there. Just for insurance in case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. My company offers a VPN service, Bytes VPN, the Google phones, VPN routers, and now we have a Braxmail email service. These products are made to protect you against big tech and their tricks to profile us. If you're interested in them, they are on my app, Braxme. The link is in the description. What's so ludicrous about Apple is this promotion that iPhone is privacy. Yet, I will tell you that today, the iPhone and in fact all Apple products have the most sophisticated surveillance infrastructure among all tech manufacturers. It really makes me wonder why they even bothered with the iPhone is privacy mantra. Clearly, it was a preemptive strike, which is genius actually. Before they made the recent changes that really made the best surveillance device, they use their big bucks as the world's largest corporation to make you believe anything. And it is so easy to make you all believe. So easy. My own siblings and their families are enamored by Apple. And I'm the weird one, apparently. I explained in last week's video how the most sophisticated technique for surveilling the environment has been built into the iPhone with this feature called client-side scanning. This allows Apple and its government partners to basically instruct the AI of each phone to spy for them. Currently, this is programmed to look for the presence of specific content on any phone and could very easily move to the next step of using the AI to recognize things in the environment, like look for specific people and specific situations and have that be reported to Apple. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's start with a little bit at a time. A very sophisticated technology has been built into iPhones and is currently being utilized by Apple AirTags and this is the Bluetooth BLE mesh network. This is actually not just being done by Apple. Amazon started enabling its Bluetooth BLE mesh network last year using Amazon Echo Sense ring cameras. But the iPhones are a little different because we have a mobile infrastructure of surveillance that the likes of which has never been seen before. Let me explain the story by first looking at the Apple AirTag. We will discuss how this works and connect this to the technology called Find My Phone and then see what is really happening. And they will go beyond that to other related capabilities which are already built in, though I don't know if it is operational yet. What you will discover is a more sophisticated environment where the data is being transmitted using radio frequency in new ways that were not yet equipped to easily detect. Let's go back to Apple AirTags. Apple AirTags have become very popular. I remember when it first came out last year and it was always out of stock in the stores. Everyone was so excited about a new gadget. My brother was excited to tell me that he bought one himself. An AirTag is actually a pretty dumb device. It actually doesn't do much. All it does is have a little transmitter that emits a Bluetooth signal called Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE. It can also receive the same signal in reverse which can trigger it to emit a sound. 
BLE is not the same technology as the Bluetooth used by headphones, which typically have a range of 6 to 10 feet. BLE uses the same hardware as standard Bluetooth, but the signal is much stronger, so the range is more like 200 feet. It sends pulses of data. Now, I haven't actually traced how often this BLE pulse is sent since I don't have an air tag, but let's just assume for the moment that it is every few seconds. The pulse of data from the air tag reveals a unique identifier, I'm sure, so like an air tag serial number. That's mostly what the air tag does, and these pulses of data are so brief that it takes very little power. Likely milliseconds of pulses. That's why an air tag lasts a year. And Apple loves this. All those who bought an AirTag last year are on their way to buying another AirTag this year. So an AirTag itself is pretty dumb. The brains of the AirTag is really the iPhone, but not as some might expect. Not the iPhone of the owner of the AirTag, but every iPhone in existence. Something that you didn't bargain for or agreed to if you have an iPhone. So let me give you the scenario here in my household. I had five family members pull out their brand new iPhone 13 Pros after dinner and everyone starts to check their Zucking Zuckbook accounts. Now in the meantime, my brother has an AirTag attached to his car keys. iOS on all the iPhones are constantly looking for AirTags. In fact, iOS is the brains of the AirTags. Each one of the six iPhones will capture the Bluetooth BLE signal of that AirTag. And what all these phones will do is send the identifier of the AirTag to Apple together with the current location of the phone that received the signal. And in case you didn't know this, the BLE signal can be located directionally, not just that it's in the vicinity, it can actually point to the location of the AirTag in relation to the phone. Maybe you didn't understand this part. All six iPhones then report themselves to Apple with their locations and direction of the AirTag and the AirTag identifier. Since AirTags are pretty common now, as long as you're within 200 feet of an AirTag, you will be participating in this reporting infrastructure where your phone is constantly pinging Apple with your location. And again, this is not your AirTag. Every AirTag report then goes into the Apple AirTag database sorted by AirTag identifier. This, folks, is the epitome of contact tracing. At any moment, Apple knows who is near whom with quite an exact positioning because it is refined by the position of the AirTag. If you own the AirTag and want to know its location, you have stored the identifier on your phone when you first associated the AirTag with your Apple ID. The actual process then is that your iPhone sends the identifier to the Apple database and then Apple reports the last known position of the AirTag by doing a lookup of locations on the database based on that identifier. But whether or not you are seeking the location of the AirTag, the AirTag position reports are sent to Apple continuously by any iPhone that detects one. In other words, the location is not sought just because you request it. The location is constantly stored. You just make a request to pull the latest data. This idea where devices work in tandem, devices that are owned by others, is called a mesh network. This is the latest advance in technology and has many other applications that I will explain in a moment. Basically, Apple created this sophisticated architecture where everyone's location is always available now, instantaneously, and everyone who has bought an AirTag is culpable for participating in this surveillance system. And now this is the other interesting part. If an alarm needs to be triggered on the AirTag so you can find it, or to indicate that someone is improperly tracking it, it gets a BLE signal to make an alarm sound. But that alarm trigger is actually coming from the closest iPhones that have detected the AirTag and has sent it a BLE message. When you bought your iPhone, you likely did not know that as part of owning the phone, your duty is to have it be running as a surveillance slave by Apple to detect whatever Apple wants it to detect. So basically, every iPhone is part of this slave network that will observe the airwaves of BLE messages. By the way, in case this is beginning to concern you and you're bothered by this and don't want to participate in Apple's infrastructure, well, they didn't tell you this. You cannot 
turn this off. You don't own your phone. Yeah, you paid for it, but Apple gets to choose what it wants your phone to do. I'm going to explain additional mesh networking capabilities later, but let me expand on a connected technology to AirTags, and that is Find My Phone. This is really similar to the way AirTag works and there's such a misconception as to how the technology is enabled. Contrary to what you may be led to believe, Find My Phone is not optional. Another one of Apple's lies. Remember how AirTag emits a regular signal of its identifier which does not stop? Well, guess what, folks? That is exactly how Find My Phone works. So actually, the AirTag technology piggybacked over Find My Phone very well. Every iPhone is already sending a signal with the iPhone serial number identifier and its location. This is done all the time while it is powered. So the iPhone locations are sent to the central database together with the serial number. When you sign up for Find My Phone, what you do is actually take ownership of the serial number. So that way, when you want to find the location of your device or your family's device, you are simply authorized to look at the location of the device in the Apple database by virtue of associating your Apple ID with the serial number of the device. Surprise, surprise, folks. Turning off Find My Phone does not stop your phone from sending a location to Apple. Turning off Find My Phone simply disassociates your Apple ID from the serial number so that it can be assigned to someone else. I talked about this in another video. If you buy an Apple device from the Apple Store and you want to return it, the very first thing that the Apple rep will ask you to do is to go to your Apple account and disable Find My Phone. You do this on another computer or phone, not the device you're returning. It doesn't matter if you factory reset the computer or phone that you're returning. The Find My Phone choice is in iCloud. As I said, it doesn't stop the iPhone from continuously sending its location and serial number to Apple at all times. If Apple then resells the device, the new owner is able to take possession of the serial number for Find My Phone purposes. How many actual iPhone or even Mac users know this? Your Apple devices have constant location telemetry that can never be turned off. Your Apple devices have constant telemetry of AirTags. Do you realize you signed for this when you bought an Apple device? This, by the way, includes MacBooks, iPads, and iPhones. This is the only difference. While tracking on mobile devices can use the GPS, the computers use Wi-Fi triangulation to get your location. All these locations are being sent to Apple at all times while it has an internet connection. Now make a note of what I just said about the internet connection because this gets more interesting. As I just said, the continuous Apple telemetry does require some way to pass data to the internet. I can see the brains of the people thinking this through. Oh yeah, let's turn off Wi-Fi, turn off data when I'm not using the phone, or remove the SIM cards. All these various ways of gaining a little privacy with this extreme spy device. But this is where mesh networks expands possibilities. I don't actually know if Apple has expanded the use of mesh networking to the level I described, but if it hasn't, it's been left behind by Amazon. The idea of a Bluetooth mesh network is that the communication between devices become peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning devices can talk to each other directly without an internet. Just like we already know that an iPhone can talk directly to an AirTag, it is possible for BLE-ready devices to talk to other BLE devices and send each other messages. Where this is being used extensively, as I mentioned, is with Amazon. Ring cameras, for example, are able to listen for BLE mesh messages and then retransmit the message over the air for other devices to hear. So if Apple has implemented this fully, then what is going to happen is that iPhones can talk to other iPhones with encrypted messaging and only Apple will be able to see what communications are occurring. Each device can theoretically keep forwarding a message to other nodes on the network until one is found with an internet connection that can then send the message to Apple. What I'm talking about here is not some sci-fi advanced tech. This is already the basis of the Bluetooth BLE technology. This is already part of the standard feature set of BLE mesh networking, which Apple is using. 
it is already being used as I said by Amazon so it would be no big matter for it to be used as well by Apple though they may not find it necessary right now. The particular capability of this forwarding of messages feature is that internet is not required. With the density of iPhones in a typical city there would be enough devices to send messages that bypass the internet for the most part. Let me combine this technology with the client side scanning feature I talked about earlier and in a prior video. It will be possible as I said in that video for Apple to give instructions to the AI in an iPhone to scan the environment through the camera of the phone. Then the parameters used for the AI for surveilling the environment can be sent from Apple HQ. Let's say the task given is to find a specific person in the world. The way the client side scanning technology works, there's no need for any network traffic to occur until the AI has something to report, meaning it finds a target. With a combination of Bluetooth BLE mesh networking and low bandwidth kind of activity and the constant location announcement of any phone, you can see that every iPhone can be at the beck and call of Apple. It's like it has a robot AI all over the place. It can sense whatever needs to be sent and a signal forwarded peer to peer even without internet connectivity until an internet connection is found and the data sent to Apple. So to put it in simple terms, the iPhone now becomes the most sophisticated spy machine ever made and up to half the people around you will have an iPhone. In fact, clearly this capability is a much more advanced surveillance device than even any Google Android phone. This is pretty incredible that we get to this point and the average person gives me a blank look when I look at the iPhones and call it a spy device. They actually think the spy devices are limited to Google Androids. And my own brothers are giving me this blank look as well. Yeah, I'm the weirdo. Apple says it cares about privacy so it can't be all bad. Yeah, look at all the good things Apple's doing for privacy like private relays and iMessage encryption and all of these fake capabilities. What Apple has done is this. It has significantly locked down external parties from accessing its data. They make it difficult now for third-party apps and advertisers to get your location and other pieces of data. On the other hand, they have increased their own capability to collect data to a level never achieved before. And we're only at the tip of the iceberg here. The communications and location infrastructure has been set with Find My Phone and AirTags. Client-side scanning is an early use of the phone's AI to follow surveillance instructions independently. Currently, it can be used to scan your phone content. The next step is when the camera can sense what is happening around it. Something that I already said is nothing particularly advanced since Tesla can already sense its environment. But combined with the massive communications and location infrastructure of Apple, this is the biggest surveillance organization in the world. Why is this the direction of the world's largest corporation? What are they up to? Did Apple really supercharge its surveillance collection capabilities just so it can tell you that you are five minutes from your destination without you telling it where you're going? Are they making the phone understand you more so it can respond to you better? But some of these moves are way beyond what is necessary for some of this functionality to occur. And that really makes me wonder what Apple's end goal is. Why are they refining their surveillance capabilities in ways we've never seen before? Just to give you a hint of the potential power of the world's largest corporation, they could know who politicians, CEOs, and even journalists are with at any given moment. They could find any person even if that person doesn't have an iPhone. They could recognize an event or situation in the environment anywhere in the world instantaneously. This is just the beginning.